Hey, have you seen my screwdriver? Uh, the small one. Yeah, I know I have a lot of small screwdrivers, but you know the one I mean, right? The one that has that auto-ratcheting feature? I need it. I'm trying to get this motherboard mounted, and it's just... It's giving me some problems. And if I can, you know, use that screwdriver as opposed to the other one, then it might help. <laughs> That's fair enough. I mean, most of the time when I'm building a new PC, I'm kind of just shooting in the dark, so... I don't know. I'm just hoping I can make something work. Well, um... I've already installed the processor. Brand new Ryzen... And I'm just trying to get the board mounted so that I can start, you know, cabling here and there. Make sure the back panel is nice and secure. Then the uh, power unit's gonna go in. And then we'll go from there. Well, the way I figure it, I should be done in a couple of hours. I mean, it's not my first build, but, well, you know how these things go. <laughs> That's true enough. Again, with me, PC building is kind of a shot in the dark, but hey, I think I'm better at it than most people. I do not think I'm better at most things than most people. I'm just, you know, I'm confident. Hey. Say what you will about my upbringing, but, I mean, I was taught to be confident, and I do have that. Confidence is not a bad thing. Overconfidence. Now, overconfidence is a bad thing, but I'm not overconfident. I'm just confident. There's a difference. Y yes, there is. If I was overconfident, I would be telling you, Oh, no. I'm the best PC builder in the world. I don't need anybody's help. I can do this all on my own, blindfolded, and, you know, with one hand tied behind my back. Confident is, I know I need the right screwdriver to do this, and if I can find that screwdriver, it makes my job a lot easier. That's true. I mean, confidence is also saying, I know what I'm doing, but having Jonah come over and lend a second set of hands? Eh, not the worst idea either. Yeah, he's gonna be over eh, any minute now, really. I mean, he was kind of insistent. I think I know what's going on, though. Well... Ever since I told Talia what's going on with, you know, my sister and my dad, they've all started to get a little overprotective, especially Talia. And I kind of think she might have put Jonah up to helping me. No, 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 it's not like Jonah and I aren't friends, we are. But I think Talia has been telling everybody that with Caleb out of town... Make sure to come over, see me, you know, take care of me, and, uh, I think they're worried that something's gonna happen. Like I said, I don't know, but, eh, what are you gonna do? That's part of being in a pack. Everybody watches out for everybody else. From the Alpha, all the way down to the Omega, everybody has everybody's back. Oh, I mean, I'll be the first to admit what humans think of as werewolf pack hierarchy and wolf hierarchy in general is 
completely wrong. I mean, the modern idea of an alpha wolf versus an omega wolf, that's ridiculous. However, the distinctions of power between wolves really are more just what everybody's roles are and how the pack functions. Oh yeah, see, okay. Caleb, as the alpha, is the leader. But that doesn't mean, you know, first right to all food or kills or, you know, hunting, mates or any of that shit. It really just means that he's in charge of making sure the pack functions, everybody's doing what they need to do, and he's the first line of defense against anything that goes on. Talia, as the beta, is kind of like his right hand. She does the things that he needs her to do so that he can do what he needs to do. It's kind of like a symbiosis between an alpha and a beta. Then of course you have like all the middles and then the omegas, but nobody is like any better or worse than anybody, it's just different positions. Oh no, I'm not the omega. I'm right in the middle. I think right now, if anybody was the Omega, it would be Salem. But even then, she's really not an Omega. She's just the newest. Honestly, I'm not sure our pack has an Omega. I think we just have varying degrees of Alphas and Betas and Middles. A couple of Deltas, really. That's all. Yeah, it's kind of one of the things I love about it. I mean, nobody really tries to put on airs, well, I'm an alpha, and I'm a this, and I'm a that. We're all just, you know, werewolves together. I like it. Well, let's face it. Where I came from, I mean, being an alpha, that's more that alpha male bullshit. Pack hierarchy was important. People, you know, stuck to their roles. Alphas, betas, omegas, deltas, all of them. But here, it's not like that. And I love that, to be honest. I really do. So, like I said, I'm happy. Oh, that must be Jonah. Yeah, he was coming over because he actually has built PCs as well, so I mean, it makes sense. Well, apparently, cable management is his specialty, so... I'm completely good with it. Seriously, he's like an artist. <laughs> Listen, you can laugh all you want, but I want this new rig to look... Really nice. <sighs> Whatever. I bet he'll agree with me. Won't you, Joan? Well, aren't you going to invite me in? What are you doing here? Well, currently, I'm standing on the front porch of your rather unimpressive home, waiting to be invited inside. Of course, I'm assuming you meant your question as, what am I doing here in this pit of a place called Frost Haven? I'm pretty sure I know what you're doing here in Frost Haven. More like, how'd you find me? Oh, sorry, but I might have told him where you lived. How did you find out where I lived? Oh, come now, Chester. If I could find you at some random coffee shop, don't you think I could find you where you lived? Well, are you going to have your father stand out here on the front porch, or are you going to use the manners I know I raised you with and invite me in? Honestly? I'd prefer it if you just left. As would I, dear boy. But events have forced me here, so here I stand. Come now, Chester. Can't we all be civilized about this? Fine. Come in. Uh, 
I believe you remember my partner. Lovely, as always. It's good to see you've been helping Chester with all of this. It's wonderful to see you again. Chester always has had interesting taste. Hmm, well, this is very cozy. Certainly no Boston or even New York, but it's so quaint. It's my home, and I'll thank you not to disparage it. Who's disparaging anything? I said it was cozy and quaint. And I've known you long enough, father, to know what it means when you say things like that. You've always held such a negative opinion of me, Chester. Isn't it possible that I really do find your new home charming? No, because I do know you. You live in the same mansion in Boston that the families lived in since before the revolution, and you're proud of that big, fancy old mansion. Well, who wouldn't be proud of such a noble legacy being preserved into this more modern age? Maybe it's time for me to build a new family legacy. Right here, for myself. Oh, that I doubt completely. Oh, but I thought it was cozy here. What, you wouldn't want to start a legacy somewhere this cozy? No, because while Father has the manners not to say it, I will. This place is a hovel, and not befitting of someone with the Richardson name. Oh, I'll gladly give up the name if you want. Hell, you can have it, Kara. You would turn your back on your whole family, Chester. Well, I tried to, didn't I? I moved halfway across the country to get away from you all. You did, but family never forgets, Chester. And neither do I. What would our dear mother think of this place? Uh, no clue. But perhaps your new mother can give me decorating tips. How is Sophia, by the way? Your mother is doing quite well. She's currently enjoying a brunch in the company of Dahlia Cowan. They're old friends, after all. Well, I'm glad to hear that my stepmother is enjoying Frosthaven, at least. The food in this city is amazing. Not quite a North Shore or Back Bay, is it, though? <laughs> it's not even a Greenwich. This is my home. And I'll thank you not to mock it. Well, it was your little break. But this fun of yours is over, Chester. What do you mean? I told you this before. It's time to come home, Chester. This little Frost Haven adventure of yours is over now. You have a responsibility to your family. You're joking, right? I'm afraid not. I've come here to bring you home. And what makes you think I'm coming home? Beside the fact that I've come here to get you? Perhaps it's my naive optimism that you'll start thinking of someone other than yourself. Myself? You think I only think of myself? Face it, Chester. This entire streaming thing is just a way for you to be front and center of the crowd. It's your ego. My ego? You have to be joking, right? Come now, Chester. You've always liked to be the center of attention. Which is rather funny when you think about the fact that you are heir to one of the most powerful werewolf families in the country as well as pretty much guaranteed a spot on the council whenever you want it. You've got to be kidding me. I started streaming as a way to escape all of that pure-blooded mania that you preach. It was never about putting myself out there for attention. Is it so wrong to want to be associated with only the best that our society has to offer? Really? The best? Like those Calvin idiots? Better than that idiot McNair you've started following. Don't you talk about Caleb like that. So, you really did start following a new alpha? Yep. 
and I'm much happier for it. I looked into him, father. He's just some dirty mixed home. Don't you dare call Caleb that word. Or what, Chester? Both of you. <clears throat> Stop it. How would this look to others? I think it's time for you both to leave my home. You can't just kick us out. Watch me. Kara, it's fine. We have dinner with the cow wings to get ready for anyway. Good evening, Chester. I'll call you again in a few days after you've calmed down. Don't bother. I think we're done here. No, Chester, we're not. Not by a long shot. Good evening, son. I'll see you soon. I'll see you in hell, Dad.